Good afternoon. I am Professor John Nordling, Department of Exegetical Theology at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne. And I'm very privileged to have this opportunity to teach you a little bit about um, the proper, for Proper 28, uh, Series A. I think that's the second to the last Sunday in the church year. And it is the parable of the talents, uh, one of my favorites. Um, I'm interested in slavery, and this whole passage is about slavery and slaves, and you can learn a lot about it. But, <laughs> of course, the point is to preach the gospel from it. So let's begin with prayer uh, for the collect um, on, uh, of the day. So let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Dispel from us the works of darkness and grant us to live in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So before we move that frame, um, I've underlined a couple things from the Collect that, that may be uh, pertinent to the Gospel. Uh, the one is the exceedingly great and precious promises uh, to those who trust you. And I think there's an immediate tie-in there with the talents. Five talents to one, two to the other, and one to the one. So uh, the talents, of course, is more than just money, but it's uh, the promises of the gospel, really, um, I think, and to those who trust you, so that what God gives us, um, uh, that we not fail him and that we uh, live by faith uh, in, the, in, the, in the deeds that we do, the things that we're given, the opportunities, and so forth. So I think that's there. And then uh, at the end, uh, that our faith may never be wanting, because this parable really is about faith, faithfulness. Uh, the master invests in these three slaves. It's an investment thing, as will come out in my discussion. Okay, let's go uh, then to the text itself, and I'll just start working through it uh, in the time that I have. Um, so, for just as a man uh, uh, leaving town called his own slaves and gave to them his possessions. That's how the parable begins. Um, a, a man, apodemon, uh, leaving town. This is an old Attic word. Uh, Attica was divided into deems. And so, literally, it means leaving the deem. He's going away probably on a business trip. And um, uh, this text is vivid uh, proof that masters would entrust their most private, uh, privileged possessions with trusted slaves. Um, and he called his own slaves together. There's douloi. So this uh, text is saturated with the language of slavery, douloi, uh, master, kyrios. Um, and he handed over to them his personal property. So, see that ta hoop er kanta autu, which you see on papyri all over the place. It's, it's his, his property. And, and then, uh, and to one, he gave uh, five talents, and to another, two, and to one, one. And then this phrase, to each according to his own ability which is very significant in this text, and he left town, uh, op ed de mason. So, um, uh, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna, I, I didn't do any research on how much a talent is, but five, two, and one. But that phrase, to each according to his own ability, I did a little research on that. Um, it, pops up a similar phrase is in Matthew 16, 27 and Mark 13, 34. But the big one is Romans 12, 
3 through 8, and I wanted to share that with you. I don't have it marked here. Just give me a second to turn. Uh, Romans 12, it'll, it'll be familiar to you. 12, uh, 3 through 8. For I say, through the grace of God which has been given to me, to every one of you, not to think more of yourself than you ought to think, but to think uh, uh, soberly, uh, to each as God has a shared a measure of faith. Okay, you've got that right there. Uh, for just as uh, uh, in one body uh, we have many parts, and uh, all of the parts are not the same, uh, have the same practice, so also the many, we the many are one body in Christ, and uh, each the members of one another, having gifts uh, that differ, okay, according to the grace that has been given to us. I mean, that's the best parallel. Um, it, it, it is simply a fact that uh, uh, in the church, as well as in the world, uh, God gives uh, varieties of gifts, uh, and thank goodness that he does. Um, some of us can do things better than others, and some of us have more of something than others, more of money, more of talent, um, you know, uh, in pastor's case, being trained in Greek and in theology, but, but it's all part of the same church. So it has this phrase here, to each according to his ability. This presumably is why the master assigns the talents the way he does. Uh, and it's not fair. I mean, it's not fair. God does this uh, in, in his way. Uh, then, uh, so uh, then verse 16, and, uh, and the guy that had received the five talents uh, goes, poor youthes, and uh, he invest, he, he invested in them, erga, ergasato, from ergazomai, it's a technical expression. Uh, so back then, I know enough about slaves that there was a lot of um, investment opportunity. So Roman gentlemen did not handy, handle filthy lucre themselves, but they worked through trusted agents. This is what uh, Philemon did, and Onesimus was his slave, and uh, Onesimus took advantage of his, of his opportunities and ran away with the money, presumably. So this is a common pattern, and that's what's going on here, too. He invested in them, and he gained uh, five others. So, you know, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, likewise, the guy that had the two uh, gained uh, two others, and the guy that had received the one uh, went away and dug in the earth and hid the silver piece, ta argirion, of his master, to Kiryu Autu, okay? So the slave master, he apparently got a silver piece. Um, and after much time, uh, the master of the slaves comes. See the ha kirios tone dulon of those slaves, and he reckons accounts with them. So there is a time of reckoning. Um, I, I mean, I know enough about slavery uh, uh, typically, the, the master would live in the city, in a city like Rome, with all its amenities, and he would have estates that were put in charge with bailiffs, they're called, and he would come once or twice a year, and the bailiff would show him around the estate and what the slaves are doing, and they had to be ready for that, okay? So, that, so he's coming home now. And then this phrase, uh, soon ire log on, uh, he reckons an account with them. It's a technical phrase, probably a Latin expression. Um, uh, so they're very technical. Remember, Matthew is a tax guy. He knows this language quite well. And uh, the guy that had received the five talents approached pros el phone and brought uh, five other talents saying, uh, sir, Kyria, Lord, uh, five talents uh, uh, thou didst hand over to me. Behold, uh, five other talents I gained. 
Okay, that's what he says in 20. And in 21, uh, the, his master said to him, F.A. is imperfect, um, Well done, oi dula agatha, a good and faithful servant. See the pista there? Um, you were uh, faithful over a few things, aliga, even though five talents is the most. Uh, I shall establish you over many things. Okay, so it's not like you get your reward and now go to a pleasure island, but it's uh, a way of, uh, you know, uh, more perks but more responsibility kind of within the kingdom of God. Go into the joy of your master. Now, can you scroll up a bit, John? Um, a little more. Okay, that's, that's far enough. Okay, into the joy of your master. He pleases the master and... And he goes into this service, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, the guy that had received the two talents uh, comes, pros el thone. So there's kind of, these guys are lined up in series waiting to, to have a conversation, a private conversation with the master. Said, uh, Lord, um, two talents thou handest over to me. Behold, uh, I have gained two talents other talents. And then 23, uh, his master said to him, and exactly the same thing, and that's why I underlined it, okay? Oi, Dula Agatha, so well done, good and faithful slave. Um, over a few things you were faithful, over many I shall establish you, set you, enter into the joy of your master. It's kind of like, you know, Donald Trump before he became president. What was that show? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, the guy that wasn't fired um, would be given a pretty good job uh, right under the thumb, though, of, of Trump. <laughs> and Trump would work with this person. And, 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 and that's kind of the, the image that comes to mind. Although this is at the end of the church year, and so it is, of course, eschatological. It's talking about the end when, when Christ comes and, uh, and we will uh, appear before him. Um, uh, we're not saved by our good works, but we'll give an account of our deeds. Uh, they, they follow the believer. Um, they matter. They're not just indifferent. Okay, now uh, verse 24, and there came also the guy that had received the one talent. Alephos is a perfect participle, and he said, uh, Sir, I knew that you are a harsh man, um, harvesting where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. So he uses this kind of agricultural metaphor. And... Uh, uh, I, I was afraid, and I went off and hid uh, thy talent in the earth. Uh, behold, you have that which is yours. So he doesn't do anything with the money but hide it. Um, and he says he's afraid. Now, again, like I said before, um, I think this is not about you know, uh, management of money, but it's about faith, finally. And... Uh, people that don't have faith are afraid of God. You know, they, they see him as a harsh uh, person. Um, God is not fair, and look what he's done to me. Uh, people that do have faith um, uh, live that way and trust the Lord, uh, follow his commandments, um, pay a tithe at church, and so forth. You know, they live... Uh, uh, even outwardly godly lives, which God blesses, and people can see this. So it's all a matter of perspective, you know. Um, the, the first two servants have uh, faith, a saving faith even, and the other guy doesn't, okay, and he comes up quite short. Um, okay, verse 25, and I was afraid and, and went and hid thy talent in the ground, uh, 26, and in response, the, his master said to him, Pane red dula kai acne re. Okay, so I underlined it again to show the contrast with the other responses. 
So wicked and lazy or sluggish slave. Uh, Acne ras means sluggish. Okay. Uh, you knew that I harvest where I do not sow and I gather where, can you scroll up a little bit, John? And I, uh, and I, and I gather where I, I did not scatter. Did you? Did you know that? Um, you ought, therefore, to have uh, cast uh, my uh, silver pieces, ta argyria, to the trop, uh, uh the bankers, the, the money people. Uh, the, trapeza means table, to the bankers. And I, having come, would uh, receive uh, uh, my own soon taco with interest. So if you're not going to invest them like the, okay, I got it. I, I'm at, I've got just a few minutes left now. So if you're not going to invest it like the first two did, um, you can at least hand it over to somebody that can. That is to say that God never gives somebody nothing. Uh, even those that don't seem as well gifted have something that they can be faithful with. Um, when I was in uh, teaching, uh, I used to do a college-age Bible class, and they would always have an offering, and a lot of those kids never threw in any money at all, so I kind of shamed them. I'd take out my, my uh, purse uh, right here, and I'd take out a penny or a dime or a nickel and put it in for each person because, you know, uh, there can be no blessing if there's nothing given at all. I mean, that's basically it, because God gives his gifts, not equally, but he does, and he wants us to be faithful with what we have, right? Uh, 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 and to show our faith by our deeds, whatever they may be. This has nothing to do with works righteousness, it's, it's faithfulness. Okay, um, 28, uh, take then the talent from him and give it to the one that has the ten talents. Uh, why didn't he give it to the guy that had the four talents? Uh, because God is not fair. That's how he works. So the one that given, given more gets the, the extra talent. Um, uh, four, and this is important, for to, the one, to, to everyone that has will be given and it will abound. Paris, you thesatai, but from him that haveth not, even what he does have will be taken from him. Okay? So this again is about faith and, uh, and the matter of perspective. God gives us all um, faith and, and all of our uh, works and deeds and possessions and so forth. Uh, but without faith, it's all for naught and it will be taken away. And then this last uh, verse, and uh, bind uh, or cast that worthless slave, Akreon Dulon, into the darkness, the outer one, for there will be uh, grinding of uh, uh, weeping and grinding of teeth. Okay, so it's, it's hell. I mean, it's basically hell being completely locked out, having no part in the master or his um, house and the joy of the master. Uh, but we don't want to end there. Um, we want to focus on, on uh, faith, and um, this would be a good time, I think, to preach on, on vocation, the different vocations that your members have. Um, some have more, some less, but we're to be faithful and generous with what we give. Uh, finally, we're not earning money for ourselves or for our family, but it's for the Lord. Um, uh, even giving an offering to church consistently. Maybe it's not a big offering, but a consistent one. Um, there's a number of applications here, but finally, it's about faith. The faith that, that we have, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant, right? And it's eschatological because on the last day, uh, this is how we will enter heaven. Uh, uh, good and faithful, it's having faith in Christ, um, 
seeing our Savior face to face and being brought into heaven, not because of us, but because of Christ and what he has done. Uh, and yet, um, with that, uh, enjoying the things that God has given us to use while here on earth. So it, we're not doing it consciously, really, but uh, out of the faith comes almost as it, on its own, uh, good deeds. And we're going to see that in the, in the next lesson, which is the last Sunday of the church year. So uh, that's all the time I have. Um, uh, I even told you a little bit about what you might preach on, but you're all good preachers. That's why you're there in the parish, and I'm a professor here. I'm very glad to have helped you, though, and pray that the Lord would bless your, your, uh, your preaching uh, this Sunday. Thank you.